episode 94 of the Beardcaster. My name is Scott Sakura and I am the Beardcaster. <laughs> Welcome to a podcast all about beards, mustaches, and the bearded culture with all the fun stuff that goes along with it. It's about the facial hair lifestyle we live from our daily lives in the world around us and how we deal with life. So please join me, Scott Sikora, the Beardcaster, Christopher Odom from Beards in Review, and world champion Aaron D. Johnston as we hear how these people are using their facial hair to do great and fun things. Welcome to another exciting episode of Talking Beards. You can find out more information by going to TalkingBeards.com. Today's episode, we talk to Douglas Smythe of Phoenix Shaving. We had Douglas on to talk about his latest big shave excursion that was the past weekend. And we also gave away some really cool prizes today, such as uh, My Dad Has a Beard and Great Beards of History, written by Kellen Roganbuck, who was our guest a few weeks ago. And we also gave away some really great products from Mudcat Whiskers. You can go to mudcatwhiskers.com, put in promo code TALKINGBEARDS for 35% off your order. We also did some really cool trivia. We talked about some news. We talked about some comps. And you know you know the drill, people. So just take a listen. Enjoy. Make sure you go over to Facebook and find Talking Beards. Hit the like button, hit the bell so you know when we go live, which is every Tuesday at 8 p.m. EST, which means Eastern Standard Time, not an estimate of when we're going on. We are 8 p.m. sharp. So let's just dive right into this, and I'll see you guys on the backside. And action. Quiet time. Shh. Except at your house. There's a party going on right here. (laughs) Is there? It looks really good. Look at those whales. They're jumping out through Aaron's beard. Shut up. (laughs) That's whale speak of our amazing beards. We're supposed to be quiet right now. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Everybody knows that. No, he didn't. My phone. I'm trying to use the phone. (laughs) And we are live. (laughs) Talking Beards live. What's up, everybody? So we're going to get into this whole thing. I hope you enjoyed our super uh, quiet minute. That was quiet Uh, time. Quiet time. Super quiet time. This was episode number 18 with Douglas Smythe. And the Beardcaster Big Book Giveaway of Butts. These books right here, these are going to be given away tonight. Boom. We had a ton of people enter for this. These books right here. My dad has a beard and great beards of history. 78,000 people are going to go up for those books tonight in about five minutes. So I am Aaron D. Johnson. Uh, As you can see, I'm in Aiken, South Carolina part of the holy city beard and mustache society and here we go chris and i am chris i'm from elgin texas part of the austin fresh hair club and owner and operator of beards in review youtube channel and scott and i am scott sakura from chardon ohio right there we just had our big maple festival this weekend a huge contest but uh i am the beard caster you can find out more about about me and my podcast by going to thebeardcaster.com and subscribe wherever podcasts are subscribed at. Perfect. Wherever podcasts are sold. Yeah, wherever. uh, Yeah, wherever. So tonight, uh, we're going to have our normal BS buttons, beard bulletin board. Uh, We'll go through some beard competitions, beard news, and as always, we'll have our Mudcat Whiskers beard trivia which I think will not be beard trivia. It will be uh, what we've been doing is the movie trivia game. And tonight, since our special guest, Douglas Smythe, is a huge, uh, you know, sci-fi nerd, we're going to do horror and sci-fi questions tonight. So be on the lookout for that at the end of the show. Did you say B? 
I'm trying to get as many bees in as, as we can. Oh, that's I don't, right. I don't know when we started that, but that's that's what we've been <laughs> that's doing. That's what we do. So, uh, yeah. So after after that, but first, do you want to give your beard books away, Mister the Beardcaster? Yeah. So uh, on my last episode of the Beardcaster, it might have been two at this point because now I get all confused about uh, which episode it was. But uh, and we're going to start running these contests where you kind of got to listen or watch across all of our. Th- different platforms here to be able to win different and really cool prizes. Now, a couple weeks ago, we had Kellen Roganbuck on the author of these two great books, and he sent me a couple autographed autographed copies. So I figured, well, let's get people to listen to the podcast. And well, of course, we did make a few posts and everything, but uh, we wanted to get people to post a picture, tag some friends and stuff. And we had 78 people who posted for this. It was really great. The turnout was really good. Um, and what we're going to do is we're just going to ask Siri for two random numbers between one and 78. And then those numbers are correlated to, uh, Aaron went and posted each one of those numbers under each picture. So we'll be able to find out. So the first book we're going to give away is the new one, great beards of history, which has a really, really cool, uh, 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 he wrote a really funny little thing in here. He says, more people die from shaving than shark attacks every year. Stay safe and grow a beard, Kellen. So you're going to win this really cool book, and it's going to go to winner. Pick a number between 1 and 78. The answer is 53. Okay. 53. 53. 53 wins 53. this book right here. Great I'll beards see. While you're, of history. While you're drawing for that, I'll see who if I can is, find number 53. Who is number 53? I is not. Will, wouldn't that be we'll funny if it was me? <laughs> Stay tuned. Stay tuned. And then Stay we have my dad has a beard with the fun inscription that says, "In the event of water landing, a beard may be used as a flotation device." Kellen. So we're gonna pick a random number between one and seventy-eight, and here we go again. Pick a number between one and seventy-eight. The answer is 22. Okay, so 22 and 53. That's a two and a two. So, <laughs> or as Douglas Smythe would say, a two and a two. Back in two and two. Oh, that's right. No, it's like that. So number 53, man, of course, it's going to be the person with the most difficult name to say. Um, his name is Orin, O-R-R-I-N, and his last name is... Uh, Smith? Et, no, Shinetsky. S C H N E T Z K Y. That sounds about right. Shinetsky. Yeah. This guy. Ooh, cool. All right. If so you've we'll... seen this guy, I will uh, send him a message. And what was the other one? Number 22. 22. A two Number a two. 22. I think that's Scott Sakura. Are you serious? No, I, I have absolutely no idea. I would have two copies of. My dad has a beard. Would you see it? It's like this. Be like, oh my gosh. Wow, look at me. I've got two copies. Like that? Is that what you would do? I would do this. I'm scrolling, guys. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. Number 22. This is this is bull crap. We can't be having this every week. Andrew Kenny Mar- Barbell won again. <laughs> <laughs> That is, is that? great. Kenny Barbell. Kenny Barbell. He's the one that won oh. the uh, trivia last yeah, week. Yeah, last week. So, yeah. in fact, I just made his little pile back there of all the stuff I'm going to send him. So, and I asked him for his email today. So, here we go. There you go. You can add it to the pile. All right. Congratulations, Kenny and Oren, for winning the Cool Books compliments of Kellen, where you can go to Beard Books on Facebook. And anyone else who's uh, looking to get one of these really cool books, you can go on Facebook and go to Beard Books, or you can go on Amazon and search Beard Books or sell or search Kellen Roganbuck, and you'll be able to find these books and purchase them there. So thank you very much again, Kellen, for giving us these books to give away today. Yep. So uh, do y'all just want to go ahead and bring Douglas in since we already have him? We should because he's so handsome. We can't, I don't, you know, we got to keep the show rolling with handsomeness because we all look so good tonight. All right. Well, here he is live from uh, Phoenix Planet X. Now, I'm going to say he's from Phoenix since, you know, he owns Phoenix Shaving. Douglas Smythe. Woo! Yeah! 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 And the crowd goes wild. What's shaking? What is up? I wasn't ready for this, guys. I don't have my pants on yet. What's going on? I don't either. Oh. See, look. I have oh. your pants on. <laughs> oh, oh. 
I almost did it. What's up, Douglas Smythe <laughs> of Phoenix Shaving? How are you doing tonight? I'm doing good, man. How are you doing? God, I'm doing fantastic now that you're here. <laughs> we're we're oh, like the that's... bearded Brady, Brady Bunch. We are. Oh, there we go. I was looking for my name. I just want to make there sure I'm in the that's right square. <laughs> yeah, you're good. What's Bottom shaking, left. everybody? Oh, you know, not much. What's shaking with you? Synophis. I hate you. <laughs> so, you had a big event this past weekend. Do you want to get into it and tell everybody a little bit about it? Oh, sure. Sure. Uh, I'm actually still recuperating from this big event. It wasn't, it, it extended be, beyond the weekend, too. It started around Wednesday. And um, it was the big shave swest. And I know a lot of your audience is probably freaked out by the word shave, but it happens, folks. It happens. It happens right here, right here. It happens. I shave my circle beard every day. <laughs> Look, me too. I shaved the other day. This side Your looks just beard. like that it's side. Most excellent circle beard, you guys. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's a, a. It was year five for the event. We have a big shave event every year somewhere in the country. Uh, last year was in Fort Lauderdale. Three years before, well, for the first three years, it was in Pasadena, California, and this year was finally in my backyard in uh, Chandler, Arizona. So it's this huge. It's kind of like the Lollapalooza of traditional wet shaving. Um, you know, we have competitions throughout the day, like the big shade best competition where you can win a wrestling belt. Um, there's live demos going on with guys turning, uh, handles like traditional shaving brush handles, uh, making soap, doing 3d printing of different razors and whatnot devices, uh, and vendors and artisans galore. Um, but what made this year is a little bit differently since it was in my home town, I had more time on the ground here to really get a lot of stuff done. So I created like these excursions that began like, the week earlier, because historically people have always gotten to town for all these different meetups days before the event. And we always would put together these impromptu, like, yeah, let's go to the bar type things. And I thought, well, let's do something a little different this year. So I created a bunch of day trips. And one of the day trips was a trip to Tombstone. And so that's you know, a pizza. So, you guys went to go yeah, look at so a pizza? Y'all went and ate pizza. We, that's fantastic. We were huge pizza fans. But no, no, this was not about the pizza. This was about Tombstone. And you know the Tombstone I'm talking about. Uh, so stuff like that. So it was really, it was just a, it was a larger event than we have had done in the past and a good time was had by all. That sounds awesome. So you said that there were shaving competitions was like, how many people entered the shaving competition? Well, it's a, it's kind of like the, through the process of elimination, there's different levels. And, um, there was like, you know, best lather, creating a lather with a brush, um, I would not speed win shave. that. I'm not good at that at all. <laughs> this helped you, though. There's speed <laughs> shave. There's a trivia part to it. Um, there's a bunch of different parts to um, the big shave best, but eventually we find one winner at the end. But, you so, know, if, if you guys are into it, next year I could probably put a, a, a beardo part, you know, into the into the mix up there. We could do, uh, like, a bearded panel. We could do a, a yeah. beard panel. That would be interesting. Sign us up. Talking Beards live in oh, actually, yeah, Phoenix, had- Arizona. We had a live podcast during the show, the Gentlemen of the Flop podcast. <laughs> they they there, and, uh, there's speed they shave, live on stage, and on off Ours the is side. way better. Ours <laughs> is way better. I think you guys should fight. I heard their podcast sucks. <laughs> I'm going to tell Jordan that. Jordan's from Art of Manliness. We'll also. bring him on. Yeah. yeah. He, he, actually, yeah, he should come on here. His, his, his brother's the, the louder than Crowder guy. I don't know. We're, apparently, we're not very manly tonight. What At least that that's you what look, Aaron, you look, Aaron and I kept you look getting very, told. Look at yeah, that. we we're not manly. No, you guys are a, a virile lot. We look good. Yeah, especially you, Douglas. Oh, thanks. I man. wish I wish you I could bring up the background a little bit better. Why don't you just so show everyone sweet, what the background? Oh is. yeah, I had the sweet background made, but with four people, you can't even see it. But this is basically what our background was. Yeah, look how good that is. That's, it, <laughs> look, oh. <laughs> I'm coming for your beards. I made it with a bunch of them, but so crazy. I don't. Yeah, I don't even feel good about this. Yeah, so we're just going to do the show like like this all the way around. There's a story, (laughs) but Scott's just going to stay behind it. Dog pile, Douglas. Stop it. A Douglas dog pile. Alan's watching. So what else is going on in the uh, wide, wide world of Phoenix shaving? You, uh, uh. Dad gum it. I forgot the name of it. Uh something from? Oh, John From. John From. So tell everyone about how you sold nine million dollars worth of uh <laughs> this product 
because I, I don't I know if everybody a little off there, no, but, uh, just a little bit. But if if anybody follows Douglas on social media, he he does a live in your car podcast thingy every day, and there it is. He went on and on about John Frum for days and days and days oh, yeah. at a time, and I had absolutely no idea what it was, but I wanted to buy it all. So. <laughs> He's pretty much the best salesman I've ever, I ever can actually sell cars. My whole life. Yeah, you, you definitely could. should. Heck yeah, you could. I mean, so yeah, tell, tell well, everybody about John Frum. John Frum is uh, my new take on Musk. And because uh, I mean, like when you think of Musk, you, you know, typically think of the stuff sold in the, the supermarkets or the pharmacies, like Aqua Velva and so on and so forth. And just this, that the old, like intense Musks of back in the day. I wanted to kind of make my own, like, new take on musk where it's like fresh modern a little bit spicy uh a little bit lighter if in the in the musk area rather than dark musk it'd be a light musk citrusy but i also wanted to add some other strange elements to it like kava kava uh because thematically yes question you, oh, you, you beard. you're gonna put avocado in there no no although i have done that with other soaps kava oh, kava. Sure can do. oh. kava kava so yes. that's like Two avocados. No, like no, that's, that's two avocados, avocados go into avocados. a bar. They yeah. turn into kava kava. <laughs> they they okay. have kava bars here. Yeah, and then avocado something baby <laughs> named John Frum. <laughs> Anyways, so um, I, the whole theme though around it was uh, based on John Frum, who is the leader of a cargo cult. Um, this is a, this is what I like about this is is a side story from the Second World War. I mean, we know all the, the you know we know the history, but there's all these little side stories that a lot of people don't talk about. And in the past, I've done that with uh, the High Jump Forty Seven some of the stuff I created a little story around that comes out of the Second World War. As does John Frum, and John Frum um, accidentally started the cargo cult uh, above Papua New Guinea in one of the islands there. As the Japanese left this island, American troops moved in to use it as a pit stop for our fighter planes. Uh, during the battle in the Pacific. And one of our American soldiers, one of the scouts checking out the island first, must have introduced himself to the islanders or the, the natives as, hey, I'm John from New Jersey. Or I'm John from New York. I'm John from this. That Maybe it was interrupted you. Like, I'm John from. And he got tapped on the shoulder and walked away. All the natives understood was, I'm John from. And what they observed about John from and all the other troops is they kept getting cargo, kept falling from the sky. And they didn't know how – clearly this was from the gods, you know. So they tried, tried to emulate the troops. They would dress up like soldiers the best they could, make wooden guns, march in formation, build fake runways, fake planes to call down the cargo. And this cult actually is still in existence today, the John Frum cult. Um, so, yeah, it was kind of this magical little thing that I was reading about. I thought I was so fascinated by it. And trust me, I'm not even doing it any justice. But another thing that they do, and typically when I do a soap based on a theme, I try to find a scent that works with that. And that may involve like the flora of the area. But instead, I decided to look into what they use um, ceremonially, which is kava kava. It's this uh, plant that they mash up, mix with warm water, and drink. Two okay. avocados. Two avocados. Mixed <laughs> and drink. And tequila. And it's, and it's like... Um, it's this milky substance and it's, you know, they use it almost like we use alcohol, but you know, I've been reading about this for years and you've seen it in stores like Kava Kava tea or Kava tea, Kava supplements back in the day when I used to work out, I used to make this tea and it would mellow me out. Uh, so I could sleep at night. I but think this- Sarah's saying that Douglas probably stinks. I think that's what this means. <laughs> oh, no, you know, she wants to smell the John from anyways. So as with all my uh, projects that I work on, I, w- I really want to understand it better. So I decided to mix myself up some Kava Kava. And I had an ex-girlfriend that went to Fiji years ago and brought me back a little kava dish. And again, I never made it up tradition like they did. I just assumed the stuff I'd been drinking in tea form was the real deal Holyfield. However, I went online, found a recipe for the stuff, and I mashed up a bunch of kava kava and sat in front of the couch and drank it. And man, it, 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 it's, <laughs> it's, it's like a sedative almost, right? 45 it, it, minutes it, it took to prepare it this way. And I could not move. I had this big goofy smile on my face. My gums were numb. My throat was numb, and it was impossible to get angry or mad at anything. Um, my girlfriend discovered me like uh, an hour later. It seemed like an hour later, anyways. So like, I could not move. What had happened is the recipe I found was for an actual ceremony. It was for eight adult men to drink, and I drank you the drank entire thing. <laughs> yeah. So you're saying that your uh, John, yeah. your John from will get you really stoned, and everybody should buy it all. No, not at all. But yes. But basically, th- basically, that's what you're saying, for the most part. It's actually it's really good, and the, the smell that I, I decided to make a hydrosol, a flower water, out of that, and it has this very strong, very close to vetiver type smell. 
So it's clean, dirty scent, if that makes any sense. I don't know well. what that is. A vetiver? No, vetiver. Yeah, vetiver. That's what I said. Is, is that is that fifty dollar like, bill? Yeah. Fifty dollar bill. Yeah. bill. <laughs> so that's like vinegar? That no. doesn't sm- smell good at all. Vetiver is would... it's a it's a nice grass out of Haiti that really has this awesome scent to it. It's actually really popular in, in uh fragrances and clones nowadays. It's probably um, really popular in Haiti, huh? It's definitely pretty popular in Haiti. Yeah, because that's their grass. So, anyways, that's John Frum in a nutshell, but it was pretty epic, and the story was like just this went is me on and on. A nutshell. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no! How did they get in here? here? <laughs> well, thank you, Douglas Smythe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so, so uh, here. So now what? Now what are we going to do? We, do you want to talk do, about uh, some comps that are coming up real quick? Sure, Douglas is here. We could just hang out with him for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, he'll Actually, talk. And then, well, let's let's bring up the couple comps that are going to be coming up in the next few weeks, and then we'll dive back into Douglas here. Sure, we can that work? dive into Douglas. How about that? I'm sure, he would appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, he's he's into that sort of thing. All right, so uh, whenever you're ready, if you are you going to do a screen deal or what? It should be. Oh, I, I hit it, it right there. Uh, nah. Nah, bro. It's not coming up, bro. Nah, it's, bro. It's not coming up. It says having issues, bro. Hmm. Hmm. We just going to wing it? Well, let's, well, well, let's go. Chris, go ahead. Hey, go to me. All right, here. I, I mean, share my screen. I'm sharing mine. All right. So, yeah, this is kind of a more beard-related topic. So, if anybody's watching and, you know. Uh, Did we just lose Chris? I don't know. Hello? Christopher, are you there? Uh, and Christopher has left the building. All right, Chris, come All back right. when you're ready to no play. No more screen share. Remove from stream and... Huh. All right, well, I can... If you want to put what I got Ooh. in box down there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't have it, bud. Oh, look at that. Okay, so May fourth. Go ahead. We have the tenth or the Queen City Beard and Mustache Federation has the tenth annual competition. Now here's a little bit about the event. Details, registrations at two. Oh, there's a kids oh look at that, how cute. We have the kids here for uh to get to compete with us. Which we had a, a kids competition or we had a kids uh, category at the Maple Festival this past week, and I think we had seven kids. That was pretty good. Yeah, that's real good. Um, and then the adults start at, at six o'clock, and there's a mustache division, uh, a partial beard. Let's see, chops, ugh. goatee, Alaskan whaler, and styled, full beard. There's a lot of them in there. Fake division, anything goes. So, oh, five dollars for junior category. Um, yeah. So we have a beard, a mustache, and junior mustache, and then the spectator. So, um. I don't see anything about who it's for. Do we know who it's for? What, the competition itself? Yeah, like who who the recipient of what they're doing all this stuff for. Uh, I would assume it would just be on there. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Queen not. City Beard and Mustache Federation's competition brought to you by uh, Bill Peterson. He's going to go chops, Bill. I thought, right? Oh, oh no. What he's going to do. What, uh, where's their, okay. I don't know. I have no idea what their charity is. I know they're going to raise a lot of money for a selected charity. Sorry, Bill. Hey, and then, so when is this on the Aaron? 11th? So on the 11th, I don't have a competition listed, but this is coming up pretty quickly. It is the, uh, 2000. No, wait. Yeah. 2019 World Beard and Mustache Association World Beard and Mustache Championships. Ooh, championships! Now there it is. Hey, Christopher, there right. he is. So if we go, I don't know what happened. Everything went black. Oh, I went full screen and then it all did. disappeared. So yeah, uh, this will be held in Antwerp, Belgium, and I'm it not will going. Be and and Scott's too afraid to go. No, that's so not the, why. You tell everyone why I can't go. You tell them right now. You tell them. Scott's too afraid to go. Nope, that's not why. Go. You tell them why. Now. 
because I won't let him go. That's right. He will not let me go. Yes, because he's too afraid I'm going to beat him. Yep, that's what I'm afraid of. So on uh, the Friday the 17th will be the welcome party and the women's divisions. They will have uh, creative, realistic beards, and then they will also have creative and realistic mustaches like we had in Austin in 2017. It's at the and Flanders then, Meeting and Convention Center in Antwerp. Yeah, I think it's at the world's oldest zoo, no. if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, literally the world's oldest zoo has like a convention center, and this is where it is. And on the 18th will be all of the other categories. So I believe it'll probably take about 9,000 hours to get through everything. But uh, let's see. I don't know exactly what the website is, but I know Brian Nelson and Beard Team USA and Austin Facial Hair Club or whatever website they're going to stream it to, which we will post a link when we know for sure. But I would assume it will be off of Austin Facial Hair Club's Twitch page. Twitch? Twitch, yeah. yeah. That's where they yeah, – yeah, the, yeah, just go under uh, Twitch and then search Austin Facial Hair Club and then find their page and – they they usually are streaming stuff, so yeah. So we'll we'll definitely post a link once we know for sure the link and all that good stuff. But yeah, so they're gonna stream all the world. So everybody in the United States that can't quite possibly make it to Antwerp, Belgium in a couple of weeks, you can watch live and see how it all unfolds. So oh, there we go. Andrew Madsen, may the force be. Blah, blah, blah. Gathering friends for the homeless. That's right. Thank I, you. I knew that. Andrew, thank, thank you, Andrew. you very much. Andrew's a champion. Yeah, there you go. Gathering friends for the homeless. See, I knew it was for a good cause. It always is. But it, yeah, not so for if, Santa Claus. I'm almost Santa homeless. Santa Claus. <laughs> You're getting there, Christopher. But are, are we going to do some breaking news pertaining to worlds? Oh, the, yes. Bring it so, up. Bring breaking it news. Breaking, breaking news. This just in. This just in. This just in. Like two days ago, um, Beard Team USA announced their their starting lineup for uh, Worlds, and I'll bring it up, and it'll be you know we'll <sighs> top and bottom. So there he is. I mean, well, look at that. Pretty much some of the greatest beards in the United States are well represented here. <laughs> there's look at Andrew Claus. He's wearing a hat. <laughs> Klaus is definitely wearing a hat. I think Gary Faulkner, that's him being Andrew Klaus because he has a hat on. Yeah, and, and then Michael Jordan is being Andrew Klaus because he <laughs> has a hat on. That's Taylor Weldon, the Michael Jordan of bearding. Everyone knows that. Yeah. And then, you know. Hey, Aaron, Patrick Dawson's going to be there. I, I heard. I, who's Patrick Dawson? I've never even heard of that guy. I bet I you Brian Nelson wears a hat. He, I'd, he'd be just like Andrew Klaus. So it, this was pointed out to me at work. If you look down in the bottom right corner at Patrick Dawson, uh, great American goatee champion, and Aaron D. Johnston, world goatee champion, we're facing off, and it looks like Patrick is like the announcer. <laughs> Maybe like, they did that on purpose. On my, it's pretty funny. It's like they – I don't know <laughs> if it was done on purpose or it just kind of worked out that way, but – Hopefully that is the goatee matchup for the world championships again. It's going down. Well, I would have been a part of this, but I wasn't allowed to go. Remember, goatee. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm so glad I left you off this list. But yeah, I mean, we got. I can't got drive my bus Madison. over there. Madison is going to be a mustache or chops or something. He is shaving for charity and he's raising money right now. So if MJ, you want, MJ just joined us. What's up, MJ? Hey. MJ. Where is the goatee? There's not one guy with a goatee, a classic goatee in this. In this. <laughs> That's Just what I said. Beard, what is wrong two with you people? Beards. God, Americans are always screwing this up. Yeah, so if what, you like mine? Do, if you want to give some money towards charity, Madison is raising money, and you can find him on all of his social medias. Jeffrey Mustache is, uh, I think, a two-time world champion. Brian Nelson, he's Brian freaking Nelson. Arnie's a world champion. Taylor will be there. Gary, Gandhi, Andrew, you know. Where's the hat? Where's the hat? Chad, Jackie, Angela, and Natalie. Look at those two. Whiskerinas, well-represented. Natalie's an international champion. 
Yeah, she's an intercontinental yes. champion of the world an and intergalactic France. planetary. She is our uh, dang it, what I say, our resident French person. Oh yes, talking to Frenchy. We and then we got, of course, MJ Johnson, who's and, in here with us right now. We believe he's, hey, he's being hey. very quiet. Hey, yeah. he's a. Oh, there he is. He said, hey. "Oh, that's not him." Oh, hey, hey, hey. 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 So, I mean, Beer Team USA going to Worlds, big freaking deal. It was amazing, and I was absolutely blown away that not only was I involved in it, but me and my wife are involved in it. And you guys Team are Johnson, the Beard Team USA. You, you're the power couple of the the beard scene. Yeah. Just like you and Chris. Y'all are the power couple, too. Shut up, Aaron. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I had another breaking news. Uh-oh. You wanna... Whoa, whoa, whoa. This just in. Breaking news. I mean, news. this is, this is a, a, a fun-filled night of breaking news. I know. There's <laughs> a lot of stuff going on today. You ready for this one? Uh-oh. Do I know this? Uh, Paul Roof. Oh. World famous Paul Roof is now. A mustache guy. A mustache guy. Look at him. Beard can professor. Look at those muscles. He's freaking huge. Look at this guy. Look at him. Mustache. Has he ever punched you in the face? Mustache. Yeah. He I would does think it, it would hurt. Pretty much. Yeah, pretty much like once a month. It's going to hurt more now. Look at that mustache. He's so strong. But yeah, world famous. World famous Paul Roof. I heard on the internet a rumor, a, ru- a rumor going around that possibly... Look at that. <laughs> if I all lean out a little bit. Um, yes. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Uh, well, there that what, uh, Paul out in front. Paul, Paul's right there in the middle. So I, if I had a microphone, okay. oh, there we go. We all can go back now. <laughs> <laughs> that he was afraid of losing to us all the time, so that's why he was done with the goatee. I tried to get him to go musketeer, but he he was obsessed with three going mustache. So yeah, the giant candy bar. He's gonna rub them all over his face. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like that mm, 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 candy bar. All right, that work. <laughs> well, why don't we get back into asking or talking to Douglas a little bit? Um, Douglas, can I? I just want to talk to you about. Do you, Do you have a cube, Aaron? Do you have a cube by you somewhere? Right behind you, I see it. I sent all my cubes to Aaron, so I, I don't. There we go. Yeah. I'm so if you, if you, if you, Chris, your cube's in a box about ready to come. All right, but uh, Wait, what's about to do? It's the, <laughs> the cube is about ready to be sent to you. Okay. Uh, yeah. So if you go to uh, phoenixshaving.com, now we were having a hard time finding the cube because you have so much stuff on your site. Like if someone goes on your website, which I should have it pulled up anyways, but uh, um, anyways, well, I'll just step back for a second. Chris, if you could, could you pull up Phoenix Shaving? I'll just tell you. Um, if you go to the search box at the top and type in beard cube, you'll find it. All right. But if you want to find it in the drop down, just go to Bath and Body and it'll drop down to Beard and Mustache Care and it's under that. Um yeah, but anyway, so I tried yeah. this thing out uh when you sent me a couple of them and I honestly like when I tried it out for the first time I was like, mm, it's really I don't know if it's really made for guys with long beards because it's kind of complicated to use. Like guys with shorter beards, I could see how they could use it, and it, but like me, it's like okay. Once I get to down here, it's like, and it's not. It wasn't really working very well, and so I was like, eh. so then I tried it again, and like I kind of figured it out. It's the yeah, hold the beard, hold the beard, and then do. Okay. I did a yeah. circular. Oh my gosh, it was like silky smooth. Like it just it 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 was foamed up nice. It wasn't like too overly foamy. Rinsed yeah. out really nice, and then. And then the best part was, is when I applied. What? Yeah. That's why I said this. The best part is coming up right here. What? Right here. What is it? When I put, when I put the balm on, it just really sucked it in and it made it super fluffy. Uh, yeah. It's because the the vinegar like stripped all the oils from your beard. Like it's super cool. So it was just ready for some nutrients on top of that. It it received it. It received nutrients. Yeah. I can imagine. Yeah, the 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 beard cube is a is a whole different animal. I'm super stoked about it, but it's made with. I mean, all those are great ingredients too, including yucca root. You can share my Vinegar screen. Honey. I'm sorry. Oh, yep. Aaron. Oh, yeah. oh, go ahead. Keep going. Google. That's me. Wrong one. 
<laughs> Just be careful. There we go. <laughs> Look at it's Doug. Uh, oh, wrong cube. That's that's a different cube. What cube is that? Wrong cube. Whoa, Get whoa, that whoa. cube off there. Whoa. Uh, on the beard. You want to find the beard cube. What cube yeah, that's is that whole, though? That's the pre-shave soap cube. Oh, oh so this so was you still use, your product. Okay, I'll go back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to be like showing off other people's crap. Yeah, there that one's that's that's for pre that's a whole different animal. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I might want to try one of those. Yeah, I'm, I'm a different animal. The, the, the pre-shave soap, uh, soap, because it's mentholated, so you can turn any shave soap into a mentholated soap if you use that first on your skin. Is it made but, out yeah. of, it's charcoal? Yeah, it has activated charcoal in it. <sighs> From, yeah. like, volcanoes? It's not volcanoes. You burn wood in your backyard? Pit. But, yeah, more like burnt wood in my backyard. But, anyways, uh, Beard Cube is what we're seeing right now. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there's the page right there. That's it, folks. And like those little chunks you can see in it, that's a uh, yucca root. Wow, what now, is it? Which, yucca, yucca root. root. Which is you know, it was used by the Native Americans for all the types of cleaning. It was it's called the the soap shrub, and uh, it has it. It's, it's almost a detergent, and uh, creates a uh, just this wonderful lather. Has great like cleaning ability. So that's in there. Manuka honey's in there. Cider vinegar is in there. Um, and you know, being beard guys, you know how awesome it is to use cider vinegar to. Yeah, to clean out the beard after, the, especially after the you mother. Know, you need the mother in there. You need the mother, and uh, yeah, so that's the beard cube, and it really is. It's we put a lot of time and energy into finding the perfect uh, combination of ingredients to to really clear clean a beard. Okay, now how and, and condition it? Explain the whole process of how you like how you do that. Like you, you know, you obviously have to keep making and testing, making and testing, and making and testing. I mean, like how how do you go about like? developing a product, putting it through the test and then getting to the point where you're like, all right, this I'm completely 100%. I cannot make it any better than this. Let's well, give it to the it, people. That's a good question. I mean, that began years ago. Like I've been uh, experimenting with the beard cube or, or, or different versions of the beard cube uh, for the last few years. Beard triangle. Just, beard triangle. <laughs> Actually, we had beard cylinder. It was shaped like a cylinder. Beard that's, rhombus. That's Circle yeah. <laughs> beard. Beard circle? So, don't mock me. <laughs> Do not mock me. Anyways, uh, so yeah, lots of trial and error. And we send it out to a lot of testers all the time. And, and I would have sent it out to you guys had I known you at the time. But, you know, I, I sorry. It just it wasn't in the cards. But the next product I will send to you guys for sure. But yeah, we just do a lot of testing and trial and error. That's, I, I just, I, I, you have such amazing mm-hmm. stuff. That's the, the, what is that? No this is gro- the no-go gray solution. Is this the new, new this thing? Is beard, this is beard, beard dye. dye. Yeah, I sent Aaron some of these too. But oh, I have three of them: natural I have a light brown, a dark brown, and a black. Yeah, natural dye for your beard. I got the grays. Yeah, this will mm. get rid of it. It's not that like, harsh chemical stuff that will you know give you a rash or burn your skin. Well, that's what it's I all natural. But I, there, but I like the rash and burning skin. Oh, yeah. now, that's like this. My worst. I've, I've had such bad experiences with uh, just for men back in the day that I gave up trying to dye my beard for a long time. That, What's up? Is there not? I did not, or I could have swore I just heard that there is actual lawsuit against just for men because of their beard dye and it's causing skin to burn and stuff. So yes, there's like that, a huge, that's happened to me. There was uh, a class action lawsuit against them for years. It's, it's an ongoing one all the time because that does happen. For me, it worked for me for like months, and then all of a sudden, it just I had this reaction. Uh, and I thought, I thought it was poison ivy at first. So I went to the doctor, you know, I thought I'll walk in clinic and he was treating me with poison ivy because I was just out in the woods. It just made no sense to me. I never connected it back to just for men until after it healed. And I used the dye again and got, the same thing happened. It was like I'm getting chemical burns from this stuff. So that's what it was. It was like these oozy chemical burns. It was horrible. It was, Ooh. it was the worst thing ever. So yeah, that totally turned me off to ever trying to dye a beard again. That's and, my uh, son doing an oozy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm so funny. You are. <laughs> Thanks, man. Thanks. <laughs> yeah. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. Everyone uh, yeah. make their oozy sounds. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, that's my Bugs Bunny sound. What was that? Yeah, that was Bugs Bunny. <laughs> yeah. Woody Woodpecker. <laughs> is there now? Is there any other things that you have in the in the down the pike for uh, you know the beards? Well, I mean. Oh, actually, I've up, I've up, uh, we've. Did I send you a new bomb? No. Okay, so you inadvertently got to test out my latest bomb, and we ended up changing the recipe after I sent it to you. So I have the new bomb out. I have um, 
the dye, have the beard cube. I'm trying to, what else there is? I got to. I, 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 I need to say something about that balm. Now, the one thing about that balm, it does something that I've never ever ever seen any other balm do. And as I open the can of it, and you, it look, you know, it looks, it looks like wax. You know, it has that look of like hard wax and stuff. And I noticed that you just take your finger over the top of it and you just rub it back and forth. And it's like almost heat activated where it just like instantaneously melts like super fast. It's like, you don't even need to scrape. You just run your finger over the top of it. And I actually just rub my fingers over the top of it like that. And yeah, it just melts like from the heat of your hand, like perfectly into your hands. And then, you know, then I can just take it up and under and get it into the skin and everything. So it's the fastest reacting balm that I've ever seen or ever used, where you don't have to like scoop it out. I love the fact that I can just rub it and it just comes right out. That it's sounded fun. really bad. <laughs> it's uh, it's born out of uh, our solid. I told y'all it was going to be Andrew. I told y'all Andrew was going to freaking win that. Just Big so y'all know. West. Yeah, yeah. Aaron did a secret trivia question in the. Uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah. so I asked a trivia question in attention. the chat for if anybody was paying attention in the chat. And Andrew Madsen got it right, and he gets way a, to go, a Andrew. Cube. Andrew, someone's wins paying attention. Yeah, and I think yeah, you did call it earlier, didn't you? So, also <laughs> in the chat, uh, Sarah wanted to know if you have any products for ladies. Well, I mean, sure. I mean, we do starter kits. Our razors are definitely you know they can be used on men or women. Some of our scents are unisex as well. Uh, there's gourmands, there's all, you know, there's spicy scents, there's citrusy scents. There's a lot of stuff that women, uh, also pick up in regards to uh lady scents, but we did do a ladies line at one point. I did about five different scents specifically targeted towards ladies and they never sold. So now we just offer like a lot of unisex stuff. So if women are interested in it, they can pick it up there. Well, I know uh, Crystal Davis. She's ordered. I, she's she raves about the the shavers and the blades and everything from you guys. Like she I just, raves. She's like <laughs> glow sticks and like you know. Yeah, yeah. I see Crystal doing that with some razors. I know. <laughs> but no, she. <laughs> well, I know really. I mean, all the jokes. Women use these now. razors not only on their not only on their legs and whatnot, but also on their faces. A lot of. Uh, Believe it or not, a lot of supermodels actually shave their faces too for makeup application. Yeah, uh, makeup a lot. Yeah, so a lot more women are coming out, I guess if you can say, in regards to uh, using uh, razors on their face. Like we're giving them permission finally to say that. You What's know? this wee stuff? You have a frog in your pocket? I do. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> oh, oh, that's not a frog. Never mind. Oh charm. boy! All right. So now what? Now what? Do we what what what's coming up for you in this in this in this year? Do you do you do you go to a lot of different types of <laughs> to shut up? I'm trying to talk to Douglas doo-doo. here. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Douglas, do do. Da da da. That's all yeah, that's yeah, all he yeah. wanted to say to you. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Um, I'm gonna call the police if you keep this up. Oh very punny. Alien con. Alien con is coming up in June, Scott. Are we going? Where's it at? LA. It's in Los Angeles. Why is it all over on your side of town? It was in Baltimore last last fall. You, you weren't there. Uh, I know. Well, you you know. Know. Tyler Hill. Are you guys ever going to carry a razor with a butterfly style opening? No, I don't think so. I prefer, well, personally, I, I enjoy a three piece razors more than the butterfly. I think the butterfly is more of a, like a, I don't know, like a gag than an actual benefit, in, you know, when it comes to a, a good shave. I mean, I say that. I say that now, but nothing's written in stone. If enough people want a butterfly or a you know, silo door, we will do one. But I, I don't use them myself, so I don't want to come off like a poser. But again, if enough people want them, we will. See, that's typically what attracts people to using a safety razor. They really like that design. But when it comes to the actual shave, I don't see any benefit to having that. In fact, with a three-piece, you can actually alter the blade gap by just slight turns of – the handle slightly, not so so loose it falls apart while you're shaving with it. Yeah, but but the blade oftentimes will function as a spring type mechanism in there, so you have a little play with it with the the handle. And if you open it up a little bit, you give yourself more blade gap. 
You can't do that with a butterfly. When you turn the butterfly handle, you're just opening the doors a little more or closing them. Well, so I think you have more play with a three-piece razor design. I had noticed when you had sent me my first razor and that the first time I ever shaved with a safety razor like that, like I could not believe how thin those blades are. They're like paper thin. I mean, yeah. and when you put them, you know, you're, as you say, you're putting the pieces all together and you're screwing them like the bait or the blades like literally going like this. Yeah. And yeah. I noticed that if I had it too loose, it was kind of more pulley. But then as soon as I tightened that sucker up as hard as it went, it just, that's when it cut the best. For me, that's when it cut the snug, best. Snug is your friend only because if it's too tight, you can destroy the razor. Like you'll pull that. Yeah. Thread pull the threads out. out. Yeah. Yeah. So snug is the way, but you can, you can pull back a little off that if you want to get, make it a little more aggressive. But again, it, it does. It, it depends on your face. Your mileage may vary with that. You know, also with what blade brand you choose too. Because every blade, no blade is created equal. All the different brands will treat your face differently. So it really, yeah. that's what's great about this. Finally, for the first time, you can actually customize the shape to your own unique, you know, face. Where, you know, and a lot of times I see people like, oh, shaving sucks. Blah, blah. And a lot of the guys who say that have never shaved right. They never tried a real razor. They've been using the one size fits all plastic crap. But with these, you can really fine tune everything about it. You can find the razor that works for you the blade brand that works for you, the soap that works for you, and the brush, all that will make a huge difference. Well, I had noticed, uh, well, and, and and for the people out there, um, if you go to Phoenix Shaving, you have like beginner like kits, you know, the, and it comes with like three different styles of blades. And I was like, oh my God, I'm like, they are really different. Like the one I really liked, the one I thought was way too hard. Um, it was, it was, it's really, I never knew anything about the world of shaving until I met you. And I greatly appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks for having me. The, the beard guys don't often invite me in to talk. I had to grow this beard to infiltrate you guys. I, I well, know. And you've, you've been keeping it. That's why it's funny. I know I'm sold on it. We both sold each other on these things. <laughs> see, let's see the other world now. The trade off. There we go. We, we do kind All of look right, like a it. pentatonics video. <laughs> you want to send up this a little bit? It's uh, eight forty-five. So yeah, yeah so. I should probably. I should so probably so, uh, Douglas, where uh, where can we find all your fine products? And who are you? <laughs> That's a damn good <laughs> question. Uh, uh, Phoenixshaving dot com is where you can find uh, beard products as well, all types of male grooming products. And if you, anyone ever has a question, concern, suggestion, any of that stuff, I'm super easy to get in contact with. You can contact me through the site. You can email me. You can PM me on Facebook, whatever. I, I could talk about this stuff all day long. And uh, who am I? I'm just a man, people. I'm just a man. Well, we greatly appreciate you coming by tonight. And uh, if you want to stick around for trivia, you're more than welcome. Or if you have to, you know, go take pictures of food or whatever you do, you can go ahead and leave. I have to go take pictures of food. <laughs> I know. I know you so well. <laughs> no, but right. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you so much. Let's do this again real soon. And uh, if I don't see you before the big meetup, Take some ass. Yep. Douglas Smythe, everyone. Thank you. Happy trivia, guys. See you, bud. High five. All right. <laughs> and here yeah. we are. Boom. But he's still with us. He's still around. Like, he's right there. He's like, oh, look, it's you guys. Like, well, I got like, he's like a mime right there. All right. So, in honor of Douglas tonight, we are going to ask horror and sci fi questions. So, screen share. Oh, we're going to screen share? Yeah, oh, just this. Oh, whoop. There we go. Yes. And, and so our trivia is brought to you by Mudcat Whiskers. So if you go to mudcatwhiskers.com, go over and check out all these. Look at these great beard oils, balms, beard bundles, sample sets, shirts and accessories, beard cleaning, combs and brushes, shaving and shaping. Now, if you decide to purchase something make sure you use coupon code talking beards and you will get 35 percent off your order 35 35 so crazy ridiculous 35 percent. and for the rest of the month i think they're still doing their they're donating money to that school yeah not this month yeah yeah so. for april yeah. which is literally up in a few days so all right so, so let's let's oh. get let's get back into trivia here let's get get rid of this whoop there Whoop, we go. There we go. Oh. We're gone. All right. So question number one. What film had the working titles scream if you know what I did last Halloween? Oh, oh, horror movie. Yeah. Um, horror slash sci-fi. What film had the working titles 
scream if you know what I did last Halloween. The Passion of Christ. Mm, Fast and the Furious. Mm, no. Matt's in forever. No. Incorrect. That's the first wrong answer Andrew Matson has ever given on Talking Beards. So did I uh, know what you did last summer? Nah, that's what I thought too. But nope. Huh. <laughs> Scott Zakora meets Sally. That is correct. <laughs> no, it's False. not correct. False. Oh. This one was kind of hard. It is because no one's gotten it yet. Yeah. Do we skip it? Nope, oh. it's not. I know what you did last summer. How it about is, is it? I know what you did last summer. No, it is not a variation of that at all. Do you you framed to... Roger Rabbit. Nope, not Halloween. Is it? I know what you did last summer. No, it's not. <laughs> it's a different. Uh, no, it's not Scream either. I think I'm just going to move on because this was kind of hard. Okay, we're washing it, washing it clean, washing it clean. Everyone stop answering. Never, now. never mind. Because before I said the answer, this person right here. Who was Good it? Good job, Andrew. Was it? Uh, I know what you did last summer. No. So there you go. Scary movie. Andrew. Yep, that's it, buddy. Thank you. Andrew B has won. Question number Number two. two. Number two. Sci-fi. Who appears when you say his name five times in front of a mirror? Ooh. Um, Not Scott Sakura. I was going to say my mom. No. That's that's, uh, 13 times. Um. Who appears? I know what this one is. I when know you what he is. his name. <laughs> Chris, Chris Odom. Odom. That's right. Jim. Boom. Brian I am. Apodaca coming in. Oh, wait. Not Brian Apodaca. Brian wait. Alpaca Daca. Hold on. Man. I would say almost <sighs> Natalie. She missed so, it. What y'all want to do? Anthony I, or Natalie? Anthony. All right, I'm, Anthony. I'm missing him. Sorry. sorry, Natalie. It's not Candy oh. Ann. It is Candy Man. Who can taste a rainbow? Look at this guy. There's circle beard right there. Look at that circle beard. I want to thank Am- 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 Anthony. Oh, Anthony. He's the one that took this. Oh, yeah. Did I put this on here? Anthony was the one who had all the really great things to talk about how he That's loved Anthony. our show. Look right there. Right there. There, That looks like a sock, yes. Yeah. Well, sock, huh? foot, freaking thing. Guess what's in the sock? His foot. <laughs> Guess what is, what's in his foot? What? His bones. Blood. <laughs> Blood. Muscles. <laughs> okay. Jam. Right. Andrew's Horror got one. Sock. Anthony's got one. Question. Number three. What is the name of Jody... Foster's character in the Silence of the Lambs. Uh, Silence. There's a first and last name on this answer. Are you about a size 14? But I will definitely take just the first name. It puts the lotion in the basket. It does just what it's told. <sighs> oh, there we go. Almost. Well, that's only the first name. You said last name too, right? She, I said she has the first and last name on here. But I will take the first name. Okay. Hello, Clarice. Hello. Well, that's Clarice. right. Hello, Clarice. Catherine got that one. Catherine. Colleen. Apodaca. Apodaca. Alpaca. Conroe, Texas. Get off the roads in Texas. Yeah, Teja. do not be on the roads Suckers. in Conroe, Teja, when Catherine is on the road because she will run you over. What I that's why you know that's why I hear I don't I don't know how to read those words. <laughs> the <No>. and <clears throat> or sci-fi. Who pushes Andy Barclay's babysitter out of the window in Child's Play? Who pushes 
Andy Barclay's babysitter out of the window in Child's Play. Clarice. Clarice. And I mean from Rudolph. The red-nosed reindeer? Yeah. He had a shiny nose. Uh oh. If you ever saw it, what is you what's even going on it. here? Whoa. Someone's, someone's internet's not lagging tonight. Catherine Colleen Appadaka. Oh, pa- Kathleen Colleen Apple Packa. Apple D. Chucky. Alpaca. Apple. Apple Packas. Apple Packas. They're coming out with a new Chucky movie. You see that? What? Is- yeah. Chucky Strikes Back. Return of the Chucky Strikes Back. Return of the Chucky? <laughs> The Fast and I don't the Chucky. It's called Child's Play <laughs> again or something. Fast and the Chuckiness. The Duke's Adults play. It's all, all right. grown up. Grown up Chucky. Oh. It's Chuck. It's Charles. <laughs> <laughs> He's in charge now. Oh, in charge now, yeah. <sighs> what sci fi blockbuster movies were written and directed? Oh, by the Wachowski brothers. Oh, yeah. I know someone's going to get this. It's a brother and sister now. Andy and Larry. Fat Thor. (laughs) (laughs) Melissa, (laughs) welcome, Whoopi. Uh, Yeah, so we no spoilers, everyone, because... Scott Sakura hasn't watched the highest grossing movie of all time yet. I'm going Friday night. Anthony got it. Oh, good job. Way to pay attention, Chris. <laughs> Anthony got it. Matrix. Matrix. I love what's, what's the you Matrix? Know that, you know that movie's 20 years old? You're 20 years old. Yeah, it came you're out in 20. 1999. America's ass. Okay, so Andrew B. has one. Anthony has two. Catherine Alpaca Baca has two. Tight race. Tight race. I don't I don't even know what this is. It's a card. Read it. What must the Lord of Darkness destroy to create eternal darkness in legend? Eternal darkness? Yeah, I have no idea what these words mean. Dude, Never it's seen. like Tom Cruise movie when like, he was a kid. They're throwing are they playing cricket or something? I don't know. I think I think it's cornhole. They're like Darkness. <clears throat> Natalie. Is that right, Natalie? Yes, that's it. Unicron? A unicorn. Unicorn. A monochromacorn. Mm. Nat has one. She's doing good for being sick. Yeah. Natalie's not feeling too hot. She looks good, though. But she don't feel good. Scott's goatee. The movie. That's a stupid movie. You'd be in it, so it'd be even stupider. No, that would make it good. Everybody Stupid might, oh, and stupider. That's goatee movie. God, I wish Scott wasn't in it. That's what that's what everybody would say. I'm not reading that. What sin does John Doe address first in seven? What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> What's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? <laughs> Jack. This will be going to Queen City's beard competition this weekend. If you are going to Springfield, Missouri, you can get the box and make sure you take a picture with the box. Anthony Back. says sloth, I saw. I'm not uh, sure if it, it was, was him. It was Gluttony. Whoever said that first. Oh, Thank you. Was that Natalie? Gennady? I like <laughs> Shannon Shannon Klinkenbeard's answer. He said hemorrhoids. Yes, it's actually hemorrhoids. <laughs> Natalie, <laughs> in hot. Glutony. So the score currently Andrew B, one. Anthony, two. Catherine, Alpaca Bacadaca, two. And Natalie, two. Ooh. Three more questions, people. So, do you remember the the thing with my my earpiece that I got that Natalie got off the internet that speaks Chinese? Yeah, so it just spoke Chinese to me, and I have no idea what it said. It did it say ni hao wu ni hao she she. Well, it was when you were talking, so I was really confused because your mouth was moving. But I heard like it was like some a movie 
girl. Ginko Siyama no Tanaki san, oop, I know then in este. Takoshito, Moshito, Matashita. Oh, it did it again. I bet my battery's dying. Oops, it did it again. Uh, I don't know the words. What? <laughs> what was the title of the 1995 Batman movie that saw the Dark Knight of Gotham City team up with Robin? The Avengers? Infinity War? <laughs> it's the end game. Uh-oh. Here, we lost Aaron. The Wrath of Khan. Khan! <laughs> That's a lot of that going on tonight. Um, that was what it was telling me. <laughs> Anthony says forever. Uh, forever, yeah. always, and forever. Batman forever. So who said? Who said it? Anthony. Anthony said forever. Mm. No one has said it. Did Natalie I s- said it. Right there. Yeah. Finally, she did. Freaking finally, Natalie. What are you going to do with beard oil? But man, it's throbbing. <laughs> what is she going to do with beard oil? She'll donate it. Okay, so Natalie's got that. So we have two more questions. English. No, I've tried that, Shannon. I've pressed all the buttons. It does not speak English. It the, only speaks Chinese. The dang. And now it died. Dang duong. <laughs> just went away. Dang duong. <laughs> That's the dang in Chinese. <laughs> dang. Dun, 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 dun. Dun. All right. Which multi talented British rock played ugh, which multi talented British rocker played the Goblin King in Labyrinth? Dance magic dance. Dance magic dance. You got some sweet moves there, Chris. The power of the babe. Hmm. I'm waiting. Uh, William so Walker's now here. You voodoo, some of that voodoo, who do you do? It's the power, power of the bee. The power of the dance, magic, dance. All right. Gabby. I love that movie. Gabby? Gabby. No, so, that's not right. <laughs> wait. Tyler Hill? <laughs> Gabby was close. She tried. I think she hit the wrong keys. <laughs> uh, David Howie. <laughs> da dang. Da dang <laughs> That's going to be on the new t shirts. Dang Duong. Davy Bowie. Is he related to Davy Crockett? <laughs> that one doesn't count either. No. Y'all suck. Y'all got... Maybe What's Chad. Not? What about Chad Roberts? Yeah, baby. Bowie. Or David <laughs> Bowie. Da, uh, he had chops. Uh, <laughs> about Anthony. Anthony. He was the first one that spelled it right. Okay. We're going with it. Okay, so we have Andrew as Andrew B has one. Anthony has three. Catherine Albaca Daka Baka Baka has two. And Natalie has three. Nothing's rigged, Josh. You're rigged, Shut Josh. Up. Yeah, your face is rigged. Haha, <laughs> it's rigged to a thing that has faces on it. Uh oh. I'm getting scolded. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Is David Bowie. You guys just spell it right. Yeah. We're not yeah. the ones. We don't make the rules. We're not. Yeah, we don't make the rules. <sighs> okay. Last question. <laughs> what is the name of the clown in it? Oh. You have to spell it right. Nickel Dome. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know. I don't get that, but it must have been funny. You're you're stupid. You don't get it. No. He must not know. <sighs> He's stupid. Kenny Bar Kenny Parbell, our winner from last week, is messaging me right now. Uh oh. There it is. Who? John. John Fabula. Pennywise. Fabula. 
Now, Pennywise. do you get it, Pennywise? Nickel dumb? Nickel dumb. Gosh. Oh, I'm ha, wrong. Ha, ha. All right, so where, where are we at? Well, that's uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That would leave Anthony as the winner. He Congratulations. Had oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Time out. Pardon me. That's a tie between Anthony and Natalie. My bad. Ooh, ooh, ooh. We would have had some right. someone screaming in the background there. Please don't get me beat up. Okay, so this one question is for only... Natalie and Anthony. Yes. Do you two understand? Nan, Nat, and Aunt. Tony. Like, Nat, Natalie, and Anthony. Did you see that uh, MJ was trying to come up with a name for me and Natalie while we were <laughs> like doing... Like Bradgelina? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly like that. Nataran, Nataran. <laughs> that no, it just doesn't work. Aaron Ali. What's up, Joey? Joey King. Okay, I haven't heard from you in forever. Okay, let's get to the last question here. This is for the whole hill of beans, the prize pack from Mudcat Whiskers. Hmm. How many? How many questions did uh, Catherine have? Right. Two. Okay, so I was just informed on the chat here that it looks like Catherine. Beat John. So Catherine beat John on Pennywise. Okay. So, so this then is it's three, three, and three. So Catherine, Nat, Natalie, and Anthony. Nat, at, and now Packadaka, Backawaka. For 25 Brazilian points. <laughs> Brazilian <laughs> bikini waxes. All right, y'all. I don't know what the question is. Do we do we stay with si- Horful? Horror sci-fi? No, science and education. Uh I don't think that's a that's not a thing. Business ethics. That's not a thing. Aeronat. All right, here we go. We're just gonna stick with uh science fiction. He's blinding me with science. Who sailed on the Oh, God dang it! Freaking words! I don't want Christopher that. Columbus. I was gonna I say Pinta, Pinta, Santa. Oh, Mar- here we go! Here we go! Here we go! Santa all right, Maria. this is for all the marbles, you three. Only those three answered. Don't y'all be a bunch of boneheads or boners. What, what race is the character Chewbacca in Star Wars? Oh, type fast. It actually says A New Hope. Daytona Five Hundred. <laughs> swords for 500 swords <laughs> <laughs> way to go swords. chad tom hanks shut up ben really it's taking them this long to answer wookie catherine oh, green it. alpaca wacka daca that's who i see it first on my screen that's the first on my screen then anthony and oh. natalie must have fallen asleep i must be behind yeah, on the times, goat butt. Goat butt? Oh, hey, hey, hey. Clinking beard pod racing. I like that. All right. So tonight's winner of the Mudcat Whiskers prize pack is Catherine Colleen Appa Daka. Palaka Daka Baka Haka Waka. Palaka Daka. From Conroe, Texas. Teha. Congratulations. Catherine, Colleen, Apodaca. I've never met you, but Colin. congratulations. So that's it, everyone. This was our 18th episode. And uh, thank yeah. you, everyone that joined us. We have 26,000 people in the live feed right now. We just dropped down to 25,000. Yeah. So any, any closing comments from you, Scott? Well, no, other than uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. I am Scott Sakura. I host a podcast called The Beardcaster. Uh, You can actually go listen to the uh, audio feed from this this right here. Um, I kind of repurpose it and put it all together into a podcast. So if you are out and about and you want to just listen to it, you can hear everything we talked about tonight. Um, all you got to do is go to thebeardcaster.com, and there's all different ways to check it out and listen to it. It's actually over there now right or not the the videos over there 
But uh, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you. So uh, find me on all the Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff. So and uh, Christopher. All right, I'm Chris Odom with Beards in Review YouTube channel where I review different products, uh, facial hair related, and uh, and also have Instagram and Facebook and everything like that. And you can also rewatch Talking Beards either on on our Facebook channel or you can go to Beards in Review. I'll I'll post it there as well. And uh, check it out. Make sure you subscribe and like and all that other fun stuff. All right. Well, thanks for uh, tuning in tonight. Our 18th episode of Talking Beards, like we said. Uh, congratulations to all the winners. Uh, Andrew Matson, Catherine, and uh, the Kenny Parbell and the other person. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we'll get everybody's prizes out to them in the next four to six weeks. And everybody, thanks for tuning in. This is a good time. Uh, look forward to seeing everybody next week and stay tuned for, uh, you know, Alf, stay tuned to, for Alf for <laughs> scenes for the next exciting episode of talking beards coming Ooh, next up week. next, next week and ciao. Bacon's good for me and cut. Thank you, Douglas, for joining us again. You're always such a, a wealth of information about shaving and just tons of really great information. Thank you for joining us. And I'd also like to thank Chris and Aaron for also being with us tonight. So make sure you guys go over to phoenixshaving.com. Check out all the great shaving stuff that he has. Make sure you look into the Beard Cube. I'm telling you it's a game changer, people. It could be one of the greatest beard products ever made. Could be. Just saying. Go check it out. But I guess that's about it for today. Make sure you also go over to mudcatwhiskers.com. Check out all the really great products they have. Uh, I've been really enjoying this one oil that they sent called NOLA, which they're from Louisiana, so they would they would have to have one called that. But it's a, it's a really cool, really good smell, really different. And I also like the uh, coffee house. They have a really good coffee house scent, which is really very aromatic of, of coffee you know who would have thought I, I would have thought i was walking into a coffee house but it's like having it on your face all day long so make sure you go over to mudcatwhiskers.com get your order already and then when you go to check out enter promo code talking beards and you will get 35 percent off your entire order that's it that's all i got for you make sure and this is my last make sure as i throw quotation marks up in the air because you can obviously see what i'm doing but make sure you go over to Facebook and go find Talking Beards, or you can just go to TalkingBeards.com. There's a little Facebook logo down there. You can click on that. It'll take you to Facebook, and you can like the show and hit the little bell so you know when we're going live. If you don't follow us on Facebook or if you don't go on Facebook, you can just go to TalkingBeards.com, and there's a big play button right in the middle of that screen. All you got to do is hit that, and it will play the latest episode of Talking Beards. So, well, I hope you guys enjoyed everything today. Thank you so much to everyone that's that's come up and supported us and done really awesome stuff for us. We greatly appreciate you. We greatly appreciate all the feedback we're getting. So, But uh, if you have anything that you want to share on the BS Buttons bulletin board, make sure you go to the Facebook page, click on the button there, and leave us some feedback or talk about some sort of event or somebody's birthday or whatever that you want to share with the community. So... Check us out next Tuesday, 8 p.m. Talkingbeards.com. My name is Scott Sikor. We'll see you guys soon and ciao. Live. Here, my sister. Oh, we're going to put her on right <laughs> Here, I'll now? put her on speakerphone. You're on. You're, hey. You won. Only won. You won. Congratulations. <laughs> Yay. Stop it. Scott said, stop it. Oh. I'll pass okay, it back I won't up. win again. I'll She's a winner. Yeah, good. Just Maybe I'll it. just be seventh place. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Hang up on her right now. So, <laughs> did they call me the hot sister get banned by the FCC or something? Mm. Oh, I don't know. I didn't say it one time in this episode. Dang. I heard her feelings. Oh, you heard her feelings. Oh, I'm so sorry. Maybe it makes me think that I'm not hot anymore. Well, this is all getting recorded for the beardcaster right now. Husband. Yeah, so you're you're still getting recorded as a beardcaster right now. Oh.
So okay. now you're officially on the Beardcaster. Report. Yeah, now you're officially on the Beardcaster. Is there anything you would like to say to all your fans for Yay, everybody? I love the Beardcaster. Definitely the best beard podcast in the world. And Mr. Scott, the Beardcaster, is my fan. And I display his autograph in my living room every day. Wow. wow. Look at that. The best beard podcast. I am the non-bearded Beardcaster lover. Wow. Hot sister coming in strong. Oh, thanks, Josh. Oh, you you just you just earned hot sister back. Yeah, my bald face king. See, I needed I just needed to get like my Maybe just in visit here, but you know, not too bad. Yeah. Well, I, thank I, you, Catherine Colleen Apodaca. Pal Pacawaka. Alpaca Daca for tuning in to the Beardcaster podcast and congratulations on winning your uh Mudcat Whiskers stuff tonight. You're Yay, gonna, you're gonna you look. So much. It's gonna make your beard grow in so nice. And and can you please uh, yeah, send and me? Yeah, Brian's beard grows in so nicely again. He's just gonna just shave it back off. I don't like this. Have have her. Oh, sorry. Have you her send me know. her address. Just, I am me. You one day, Scott. She she said she hopes you talk to her one day and meet you. Meet. I hope I meet him face to face one day. Face to face. Ooh, have her, not too close. Have her, not too close. Have her send me a, a direct message of her address. Yeah, I got her address. Okay. I, I have her contacts. You do? Okay. Okay. Bye, hat sister. Okay, bye. Oh, I recorded all that for the podcast, so. Oh, God, please. No, cut it out of there. That's all right. I just hit record right now. So that was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> what did I miss? Oh, we can't talk about it now. We can't oh, talk about it now, Douglas. Now that I hit record. It's Welcome a, back, it, Douglas Smythe. Oh, sorry. here. This will give us something to talk about. Yeah, look at my pinky. How, like, separated. I never noticed it until you posted that picture. Like, how what's, farther. What's wrong with your pinky? Live long I don't know. Prosper. Are you but freaking that, deformed? Just kind of Are you long. an alien? I might be. I'm just now noticing that my finger does, my hand does that. That's weird. I, I don't I, know what other than this. But if, you, <laughs> <laughs> but if you even look at the other picture where you're holding the clippers, you still have that gap. Do I really? I kind of do. Like, what's up with that? 